One of the things I find interesting that, you know, we've played a lot together is whenever, <coughs> excuse me, I have the, the snare drum going and you have resonant things, there is a, like a dynamic system that emerges as something that's beyond the both of us, mm -hmm. which happens to be semi in my control, but not really like where I'll bring in resonances and they're sort of somewhat tuned or, or, you know, untuned with you in a way that rarely is uninteresting. Like towards the start here, I had, I was kind of playing drier material, but you, you had like these long resonant tones that were kind of pulling some of what I was playing into this kind of 
dissonant drone along with it. Mm -hmm. So underneath all the dry stuff, there was like this sort of tone kind of bubbling out, which was kind of interesting. And it's always nice to play. I mean, for me, like with this sort of feedback stuff in a context where these, I mean, they're not even accidents at this point. They're just products of the the instrument and, and the environment that kind of creates some musical sort of things. I mean, I don't know what, you, what your experience with that is, like us playing together or, or this specific time. Um, well, it's, uh, for me, it's like um, another reading of uh, some kind of combination of site-specific playing and just being in the moment and the time. Um, the minute you start working with instruments that respond that, uh, in ways that these instruments respond, which is not the same as an acoustic instrument, you, uh, you, that sensibility to the moment and the, and the place is expanded to encompass instruments that react in ways that are not how you're being sensitive to the time and place, yeah. but how they are. Yeah, yeah. and that I, I I really like that. I mean, that it always has happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody who plays a reed instrument knows that you go from a really dry place to a really damp place, and your instrument performs totally differently. Mm. But this is kind of expanded in that sense. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. <coughs> There's also something for me that has to do with um, different strata mm -hmm. uh, go in some of the slowest parts. Um, I'm on a level where I know where certain sounds are and I'm, I, I want them. And so I'll go there and get them and uh, put them in. And then there's another level where uh, I'm not really putting in specific sounds, uh, but the, the, rather than knowing where certain sounds are, the knowledge is of certain ways of playing, hmm. certain, certain kind of gesturality in, or gesture in the instrument. And then there's like a third level that's uh, even more flow. Hmm. It's, it's, it's just playing the instrument and the sounds are coming out as they see fit with regard to, yeah, yeah. to, to, you know, mm -hmm. but they're, they're really definitely different levels of body and instrument and technique and memory and listening and external and internal stimuli. They, they're functioning at, in different combinations and at different levels. And I, um, the, the way you're playing and the way we're both playing sometimes, maybe not so much in this piece, but where mm, things are very agile and mm -hmm. rapid, but they're not in a fast underlying mm -hmm. sense of time. The time underneath is quite gradual and, and relaxed, but the individual gestures or yeah, yeah. materials are quite fast and agile hmm. and that that for me is quite interesting in terms of of how i'm responding yeah, yeah. you know i mean with me it was, it was something that we we touched on briefly the other day but um the instrument i'm using is so singular in its, in its conception mm -hmm. like i didn't i didn't design this system to play with other people yeah. And we kind of talked about like, and that would be an interesting thing to see how that unfolds. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's kind of interesting because I think some of it speaks to that in that the, the, the general top level musical gestural language is quite fast and it's quite dynamic and gestural and, and very quick moving. But because I have, um, at least with this software patch, um, a fairly limited scope in, in sort of the largest sense of that word, mm -hmm. um, there aren't that many places I can go, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, there's some of the the overall arc of material is is not necessarily limited, but it is encompassed by decisions that I made regarding this particular instrument. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I, I set up a whole bunch of acoustic things around me, knowing that I could go there, but I didn't want to um, artificially force something that wasn't happening from the instrument. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to get too extend the technique with the the concept of this instrument sure. to, to force a, like a 
formal changes that that weren't facilitated by the by the, like the material language of, of what was happening but it's kind of interesting to play with because we played yesterday for the first time with with me using this instrument with you and um I was surprised at how many places I was able to go, mm -hmm. which is which is great. Mm -hmm. It's it's much more than um, I had designed it for, mm -hmm. but much less than other times we've played together when I've used a, a different instrument where right. it was more built like something like your instrument, where it's it's ready to go many many places. Yeah. This one is is not. Uh -huh. um, so it's kind of satisfying to to hear that play out in terms of using for, for one the the local level language, which I think works actually quite nicely here. Mm -hmm the hearing the the limit of the arc or scope or the formal dynamics and the agility therein um and then where i push up against those places or where we push up against those places to kind of find uh -huh. the not the limits in terms of like we're going in a direction and there are limits to this direction but like the the limits of the the possibilities that are there mm -hmm. of which we don't encompass all of it because that would be weird yeah um and perhaps yeah. not musical yeah yeah, well, for me, um, I think the this kind of playing uh, it brings us both up against our limitations, which makes me very, you know, very happy. I mean, I love that <laughs> um, because uh, you you set up an instrument that um, that at least. For you conceptually, in fact, then in, in your as you're actually playing in your body it, it, it is 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 playing. You find yourself in places you didn't even know you could go mm -hmm. with that setup. Mm -hmm. But there is a an idea of um, uh, containment, perhaps uh, that you you're going to be working in certain areas, um, and yet. Mm, there's a, a wonderful capacity for gesture and for nuance in the physical movement of the materials. Mm -hmm. um, besides what happens when the computer reads it and, and generates something. Yeah. Just, just actually how you're able to manipulate those objects on, with relationship to the drum mm -hmm. and to each other, um, I think is, is uh, on a par with how well you're handling the time and the silence and mm. the, and and uh, the limitations I'm aware of are how ungestural my instrument is, right? <laughs> and how much I how easy it would be for me to to just do kind of a candy store thing where now we're here and now we're yeah. there and now we're upside down and you know, and yet how much. I need to know this instrument in order to be able to really work uh, on a level that inter interacts with you de gesturally hmm. rather than just sort of timbrely or yeah. or uh, on other parameters that 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 where the instrument is stronger. Hmm. And so it's always pleasing for me because it forces me into um, something that I want to be in anyway, yeah, yeah. which is to really make gestures with things that are not a priori gestural. Hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting for me. Let's play a little more. Yeah. yeah. 